Fusion 360 is a cloud-based centralized collaboration platform. And the purpose of this lesson is to teach you how to manage your Fusion 360 data within it and enable you to more easily work with designers and engineers. In this section, you'll learn how to organize your data into different projects and control who has access. You'll learn how Fusion archives and stores versions as you build and develop your designs. You'll learn how to upload other data into your projects so you can use it. You'll learn how to manage data using both the data panel in Fusion 360, uh, the web browser, and you'll also learn how to enable others to access your data from anywhere, whether it be from their mobile devices like iPads or iPhones, or by sharing public links with someone who doesn't even have a Fusion login but has access to the web. By the end of this lesson, you should feel confident to use Fusion 360 to both design and share your creations. So let's get started. To get started, make sure that you've downloaded all the, the data sets in the Chapter 5 module. In this lesson, we're going to take uh, the existing box cutter and bike designs that you've been using in the previous tutorials and set up a new project to start developing a new set of products for a new client. To begin, go ahead and open the box cutter design and hit right off the bat, File, Save As. And what this will do is that we're going to create a copy of this box cutter and put it into its own project. And so that's what that button right there is. If you hit hit the project button, uh, make a new space to put this box cutter and call it something like new design project or something. It doesn't matter what you name it. Pick something you like and then hit save. And so what it'll do is that it's going to create a new project. And so projects are the, the, the most basic way that Fusion is able to organize data together. And so in this data panel, you can see all the different projects that you have access to. And so you can navigate to that new one, the new design project that's created. And you can see within it that first design that was created. Next thing we need to do is hit the upload button. And we're going to put the rest of the data uh, through a different means uh, into the project. So we'll go and we'll stop start off just by navigating to the Fusion Bikes uh, archive file that's stored just within that data set that was provided and that'll start to upload and then go and navigate to the remaining three SOLIDWORKS files that are going to be the wheel that we're going to ultimately put into the bike design in a little bit. One of the really nice things about this upload command is that not only is it going to pull all the data into that project for you, it'll also aggregate the data that can be aggregated. So that assembly file is the parent file to those, those child uh, wheel parts, and those will all come in as their own Fusion file. So we'll see that in a little bit. So while that's uploading, go ahead and multitask a little bit, and we'll just start creating a new design iteration of the box cutter. So to do that, we'll just make a really simple change to make a new, a new version to, to look at how Fusion manages versions. Go ahead and right click and go to your appearances and just drag and drop in a different color. And we'll just do that and then hit save. Here I'm just saying, hey, this is this is green. And it will save the previous version and it'll also create a new version, which you'll actually be able to see reflected in your data panel in a second when it updates. Now, the next thing we need to do is now that we have this new 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 version, is we need to add someone to the project so they can see what we've done. And so that's what that button right there it says invite so go ahead and invite someone if you know somebody else who's using fusion and you want to do this along with somebody add that if not just add me I'm michael.aubrey at autodesk.com and you can see in this case who has access now to all the data in this project and so once you do that whoever you invited will get this this really helpful email sent to them saying that they've been added to the project that's what that just came up there on the screen and then you can see now there are two people who have access to this new box cutter design. So let's give them something else for that new person you added to see here. We'll make just a third iteration here so we can explore this a little bit. Um, just drag it back a little bit and just create a new snapshot. That's what that button is there. So it's open and closed. And then make a new version there as well and just say this is closed. We'll see the differences between these different versions in a moment when we go explore the web, uh, the, the web browser. So once you've created it, go ahead and hit it just close it out. New version has been created. And let's make a drawing for that third version. So in order to do that in the data panel, just right click on the box cutter and say new drawing. The reason why we're doing this is we're going to show how Fusion manages different file relationships in a little bit. So uh, just give it, uh, don't think too hard about kind of what the, is in the drawing here. Just give it something like a front view and then go up and say, get, say click on the projected view and then create a top and ISO and a side view. And we'll be able to see as we explore different versions in a second how the drawing updates based on what version we are designating as being the current version. So once you've got that, hit the save button and that'll, that'll become its own file. So Fusion's drawings are associatively linked back to the design that they came from. This is also true if you make a tool set uh, using the CAM capabilities within Fusion. We'll take a look at these these link associations when we go take a look at where the data is stored in the Autodesk 360 collaborative part in the web browser in a second. 
So for now, just go ahead and close out that drawing and create a new file, and then we'll go take a look at where the data is stored. So when, you, when you're ready, go ahead and go to your utility knife, and then say you want to open that in A360. So A360 is the web browser part of Fusion that allows you to sort and manage, manage your data, and then keep in touch with other stakeholders who aren't necessarily even needing to use the modeling capabilities of Fusion. So that, this takes you right to that design, and you can see right off the bat all the different information that's contained within it. So what I'm looking at right here, you can see there's uh, cloud renderings that are associated with each version that's been created. We've created three so far, and so you'll see a set of renderings that were created for each of those versions cataloging them. Next thing you can see is you actually can see the different versions, and so you'll see like the descriptions that were entered along the way. You'll be able to see a preview that comes along. So you can see version one is orange, version two will be green, and then version three has the knife uh, retracted. And so all that information is readily available in one spot, so you can see as a design grows and evolves uh, how changes were made, along with information uh, documenting along the way how it got there. These 3D previews can be really useful to help communicate what's going on in a design by using some of the capabilities to help narrow down where in the design it's important to draw attention to. So one of the easiest ways to do that is just clicking on the individual parts. You can see when you click them, you'll get a quick little highlighted preview and you'll get information about the appearance assigned to it, materials, with that comes information like the density, which will in turn give you things like the weight, really handy. You can isolate those as well by using the isolate button. The same information is there, but just different ways of showing it. Another tool that's in within this 3D preview that's that's that can be useful for helping identify things that might be hidden on the inside is to use the explode command. So just go ahead and click on that explode button, and then use that slider to move things in and out. And that's just another way of of better clarifying what's going on in the design. Now that you've had a chance to explore three different versions that were created, take this opportunity to document why a certain design change was decided upon or inform other people within your project why a design change is about to occur. Fusion is a great collaboration tool because you can do things like in this case like add just a quick message or comment to why you're going a certain direction or you can also do things like add photos or, or, or documents to, to go with this. It's a great way to help keep everybody up to date with what's going on with your design where the data is so it helps keep everyone synced up. So what I need to do next is, uh, in this comment, I need to go back to a previous version because I forgot the customer actually wanted it to be orange, so green is not going to work for us. So you can do that. It's actually really easy. You just go to that watch icon, and then the way you do it is you just go and say, I'd like to promote my previous version. So you don't actually ever go back to version 1. It'll actually make a copy, a totally new file, and then just make it the current version. So in this case, it's now version 4. So let's take a look at what that actually does for for the file, um, that current version is what other files around it will be referencing from this point on. So remember that drawing file that we made a moment ago that was showing a, a case a closed box cutter. Well, now that drawing you'll see as we pull it up there now it's again showing that it's an open box cutter because it's actually referencing that current version. So that that'll show you that that little space right there shows you all the different files that are impacted by these types of decisions. So you can keep uh, appraised of, of what's going on. Now that we've added a fair amount of data into this project, let's make it so it's easier to find among the other projects that you're going to be building. As you increase the amount of designs in your portfolio, uh, just adding a simple visual cue to your projects can make them all the easier to navigate to as you're looking for them. So in order to do that, just go ahead and go to that icon, say add logo, and then navigate to that icon that's available in the Chapter 5 data sets. Well, when you find that, go ahead and double click on it, and then you'll add it. Any any other image will do. If anything that's 200 by 200 pixels or smaller will add in. Just make sure it's a JPEG or PNG. And then you have this nicely customized project space that'll be really easy to find as you go to access it. So next up, let's go ahead and sh take a look at what this would look like on another device. One of the things we talk about Fusion being really good at is being available anywhere on any type of device. So if you have an iPhone or an iPad, if you have an Android device, this, this functionality is actually coming soon as well. You can access this data through those devices. So to do that, uh, if you have an iPhone, just go ahead and, and search for the Autodesk A360 app. It's a free app and a free download. And once you've done that, and once it installs, uh, just go ahead and sign in. So the sign in is going to be the same sign in that you use to access Fusion 360. And that's going to be the same for other users that you've added to this project as well. And there it is. So you can see all the different projects. There's that new design project that we just added a moment ago. And all the information that we've been pulling into it is available. So things like who we've added to the project, you can see the, the bike and the bike wheel are now available among the different designs there. And you can scroll to, there's the there's the knife cutter with the, with the version restored. 
all the different ways of navigating that 3D viewer are available in this in this mobile uh, environment as well. So just a quick tap tap will help you ch change the pivot point. But other than that, if you want to do exploded views or isolate d different components, it's all available there too. Yeah. So now that we've shown that you know, Fusion really truly is available anywhere, it's it, it does place some extra responsibility on you, the manager of your project, to really understand who has access to that data. So in this next part, let's talk about what where that point is to know who has access to the project and also talk about how to remove access if you'd like to. Go ahead and go back to your web browser, so Chrome or Safari, whatever you've been accessing Fusion through, and then go click on the people icon. And it's that simple. This is where you will go to know who has access to your project. So right now I have two people in this project. I'm going to hit the remove button to remove access to one of them. And that's all you have to do. You as the manager of your project have the ability to revoke access at any time. So that, that, other, that the person I just added, they can't get back into that project anymore. Great. So now that you're familiar with how to control who has access to your project, next up, let's customize the project further so that the people who still have access can better navigate and find the data within it. So to do that, we'll just do some simple file management. And to do that, go to the Data tab. You can see on the left-hand side there that's highlighted. Go click on that. And what we'll do next is we'll just add a couple of folders, and we'll move some files around and rename some things so that we better understand what they are. So the new folder, there's a button in the upper right-hand corner. That's how you can create a new folder. And so once you have that, add a new folder, and it'll get created. Then to move files into that project, you can do one at a time, or you can use those check marks. And then together, you can just drag and drop them in pretty easy to move. Double click in and then to rename them it's just a right click. So you can right click on that utility knife and rename it to something that maybe is a little more clarifying. It's it's not just a utility knife, maybe it's a new utility knife. Give it a give it a name that you like and that'll be that's something you can do. So that's just a quick kind of overview of how to move data around, rename it. This is also the same place you would go if you need to do things like copy or if you want to delete something, just right click on it and delete. So I've deleted the drawing because I'm not going to use it anymore. Um, so those are some ways of just navigating and, and managing files within the Fusion 360 dashboard. Next up, let's take a look at some file operations that you can do without even needing to be in the, the web browser area. Go ahead and close out Chrome and go back to the Fusion 360 modeling environment. And then when you get a chance, hit the refresh button. What we're going to do here is a simple operation that's really easy to do right within the modeling space, which allows you to insert one file into another. So hit refresh, and you can see in the background, while we've been doing our other exercises, that the Fusion bike has been uploaded and the SolidWorks wheel has been upgraded. The parts files and the assembly file that were both SOLIDWORKS files have now been combined into one assembly and now it's just a matter of us going and opening the bike data set and we'll go ahead and insert the wheel in there just to show you just how that works so it's it's really simple you just go double click to open up your one data set and if we want to pull the wheel and go to the other one just go hover over the file that you'd like to insert so here we'll hover over that that wheel and just say insert and it's just that simple and so next up, it's just a matter of getting it into place. So I'll just show you a couple of modeling tips that'll help you move things around. So I'm not going to show you how to make it into an assembly and use things like joints. There's actually a whole module there. But what I'm going to show you here is just a really simple way to use what's called the align tool. If you go and you click on the wheel command and make it a rigid group, all of those part files within that assembly will move as one. And then if you go and click the align tool, you can click on the circle for the, the wheel and then go hover over where the spoke is uh, that that it would, it would be actually in, in, in tune with. And you can just click on that. And what it'll do is without actually creating any sort of reference or constraint, it just aligns things so that it gets in the right place. And then you just go and move things into the center. And the reason why we would do this over doing a joint is in this case, if I just want to pull in a wheel just to see, just a quick sanity check to see if whether it's going to fit, if it's the right diameter, if I'm, if I really do want that look for my bike, I can do it without having to commit to actually making a full assembly. And uh, this is a good example of here, like before I'm going to build things out, I'm going to tell my teammates here by opening up the activity feed that, hey, I added the wheel and just making sure it's clear, everyone's clear as to what style of wheel I pulled in there, what kind of tread. This, there's a really nice way of just kind of making these quick conceptual models and adding a couple of quick notes uh, that can help in your upfront exploration of designs before you actually commit to building a full modeling practice. This is another great example where Fusion can be just a really great conceptual modeler. Whether you're dealing with conceptual data like with the bike example we just did, or if you're dealing with production data like with this box cutter, you're always going to need to collaborate with people that aren't necessarily always using Fusion 360. And that's what this final workflow speaks to, how to share data outside of Fusion. And it's really a right-click, share, public, link. If you want to make your data available for others to download, whether if they're using third-party tools like a, you know, a cam tool like a Mastercam, or if they're if they just need to view it for reviewing purposes on the web and they don't have a Fusion login, 
you have the ability to right click say share public link and what you can see is there is a URL you can copy that and then you can choose if whether they can download the file in various formats like IGIS, DEP, the Fusion, Native Fusion, there's a whole set of other ones you can choose from and then if whether you want to password protect it. So here's an example of what we've done here with the knife cutter. We've made just this new utility light, new utility knife that's set up with a password. I just picked Fusion with an exclamation point, and then anybody that has access to the internet is able to then log in, and you can see available right there the 3D preview, like what we've been exploring with previously in the mobile app and with the uh, the Autodesk 360 web viewer. So they're able to rotate things around. They can do all those old explode views and look at parts, and then they can download it. So whether it be DXF, STL, Inventor, go out to Fusion, Step, all those file formats are there, and it's just a URL away. So with that, that concludes all the major ways that we can manage, organize, and share data within the Fusion 360 experience. So with that, we'll conclude the, the exercises. Let's quick recap what we've learned. So what we've learned today is that we've learned that we can take existing Fusion files and create totally new ones and put them into totally different projects. Projects are used to control who has access to that data, whether it be a different customer or just a totally different product line. You can control who has access to those projects by controlling who, the, who is invited. You can invite and uninvite. You can control how you access them, whether it be through the Fusion modeling data panel, through the web browser, through a mobile device such as an iPad or an iPhone, or if you want to grant access to someone who doesn't even have a Fusion license, they can access it through somebody by even giving them just a Fusion, just a URL for them to download the file from. We've investigated how to manage, organize, create, delete, move, rename, and insert file assemblies. So with that, this is a, a very basic overview of all the different ways we can manage within Fusion. Hope it was useful for you, and enjoy the rest of your training modules. Have a great day. Bye.